The cloud sea, an endless expanse of white, hiding the dark depths from the light of day, only to be explored by brave salvagers who want to understand its secrets or cash in on its untapped potential. But what is this sea and how does it work? Today, we'll be demystifying its cloudy origins. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is a beautiful game, and I am obligated to say that Nintendo did give me a free copy of this game to make a video about it, so here I am making a video about it. But back to the landscapes, Xenoblade games have always astounded me in the world design aspect. This world is so full of rich details that it feels as if you are a part of the world, especially with the wiki being almost non-existent at our point of playing the game. We were definitely going into unknown territory. One of the coolest pieces of the world, and the one that we're going to be talking about today, is the Cloud Sea. This landmark part of the world can be seen from pretty much anywhere outdoors. In fact, I would say that the entire world is covered by these clouds. So first off, let's talk about these clouds. Are they in fact sitting on top of the sea, or is the sea just really dense clouds? For those of you who have played the game, this shouldn't come as a surprise, but there is water under the clouds. In the beginning, I thought maybe, just maybe, that the clouds are just super dense the further down you go, almost like water. I mean, clouds are just water, right? So technically, it could just be really dense, dirty clouds. But what makes clouds sit on top of water? Well, actually, technically speaking, they don't. Realistically, it's fog at this point. Fog is, extremely simplified, pretty much a cloud on the ground or touching the surface of the planet. I mean, if a cloud fell from the sky to the ground, we normally call it rain, not just ground clouds. But since they don't call it the fog sea, it could be that the Alrestians don't have a word like fog. But let's cover everything anyway. Fog is formed when local water evaporates or ice crystals are suspended in the air. And fog can be classified as a low-lying cloud, so we have some stable ground to say that it is still a cloud sea. And we do know that this isn't mist, because there is a definition for this. It's only fog if you can't see one kilometer away from yourself. The word mist, then, is for lighter vision-impairing low-lying clouds, just so you know. So this is mist, and this is fog. Huge difference. So, now we know how fog is formed, but what is causing this endless fog to form across the globe? Even during the day, not just nighttime. Normally, fog dissipates when the sun comes out as it heats everything back above its dew point. Which I should also explain, the dew point is when the air gets completely saturated by water vapor. Once past the dew point, the water particles in the air will condense and leave water droplets all over whatever it can stick to. We call this dew. The dew point is variable though, it depends on the humidity and temperature of the surrounding air. And being that this is a water world, I'm going to say that there is pretty high humidity. My poor hair. The dew point is very vital to fog and cloud creation. When the temperature is about 2.5 degrees Celsius or 4 degrees Fahrenheit away from the dew point, just close enough to saturate the air but not enough for it to rain, fog is created. The water molecules will start to attach to dust particles in the air and just be suspended in the air, creating fog. Fog is a fickle beast, and it requires a very precise list of prerequisites to be formed. And if one thing is just a bit off, nothing will happen. But thankfully, fog doesn't have just one list of precise things. It has millions of possible different combinations. But just to save us some time, we went ahead and looked up all of the millions of ways fog can be created, and we've narrowed it down to the few that could be conceivable as the reason for Alrest's fog cloud C. First up is evaporation fog or steam fog. This this fog occurs as water is evaporated because of the sun's heat, but the surrounding air system is still rather cold, creating a layer of dense fog in between. This is also normally in conjunction with radiation fog, which uses the sun's radiation to pull moisture from the ground. Though this fog is normally created over land rather than water, so because we're dealing with a sea and Xenoblade's cloud sea is much more dense, steam fog is the most likely candidate. But unfortunately, steam fog and radiation fog both rely on the sun's heat to keep it there. 
but we see that the fog is just as dense during the day as at night, never really dissipating as it naturally should. Which leads us then to advection fog, another very strong candidate. Using warm, moist wind, the wind passes over a cool area, the ocean for existence, creating a temperature difference that is perfect for fog creation. And fun fact, this is the type of fog typically associated with the San Francisco Bay on our own Earth. One side effect of this fog is that the wind constantly moves this fog, and causes it to be rather fading as the wind will dissipate it eventually. But, then again, Xenoblade's oceans may have large geothermal activity that heats the water, creating the temperature difference we need. We'll get back to that later. But to speak more of this weird world, the Cloud Sea does experience tides, but only around a few titans like the Gormot and the more Ardian titans. Other titans like Uriah and Indol seem to float or fly above the sea, so the effects of the tide are more unnoticeable. Which leads me to believe that these titans Titans actually do reach the bottom of the ocean with their legs. So let's just say that these Titans for sure earned the name Titan. Egad. Maybe this ocean isn't as deep as we think it is. As for these tides, they are affected much like our real-world tides by the moon. In Xenoblade 2, you are able to change time at will, but this does not affect the tide levels, but I feel like in this case, it's more of a game mechanic. You can wait years of in-game time, and the tides will never change, but when you take one long rest at an inn, they are suddenly completely different. And yet, neither of the rests in the game affect the time of day. So, ugh. That's a gameplay mechanic for sure, not associated with lore. I mean, it is often alluded to that the tides change rather frequently, so the lore is solid. Normal tide patterns on Earth are about every 12 hours, give or take, depending on the moon's orbit. And in Xenoblade, we unfortunately don't have much information on how the titans affect the tides in this situation. But being as massive as they are in this otherwise empty water world, their own gravity could certainly play at least some small role in them. And speaking of sparse information, the Cloud Sea is host to many sunken treasures from civilizations long forgotten, along with many dead titans and crashed ships. In addition to the treasure, there are many sea creatures that love to hide in chests. For fun, I guess. Pro tip, don't salvage until you get at least two people in your party. Those crabs just kept wrecking me! But let's talk about those crabs for a minute. In a sea that is constantly covered by clouds, I would take the wild guess and say that it would be rather dark under the water. Even during the opening cutscene, we see that Rex needs his flashlights. But there is also an unknown light source that's giving off this light blue hue. But I believe this to actually be part of some game design aspect. It's there to let you actually see what's going on and to look cool rather than be technically accurate. So besides this, it must otherwise be near pitch black once you start to get deep enough. This darkness, then, must create some truly terrifying creatures. Look at these weird jelly manta ray things, and we can see that the crabs are relatively unchanged, except for the whole bipedal crab king thing, and they are huge! There must be some geothermal activity in order to produce enough energy to allow such large aquatic life to live in this total darkness. That, along with the possibility that the aquatic life is flourishing due to the titan dying off at a much larger rate. Whenever dead whales fall into the midnight zone, a feeding frenzy occurs, and nothing edible is spared. It's quite neat. Anyway, we got sidetracked. So considering everything, the geothermal activity at the bottom of the ocean, keeping the water at least somewhat warm, but definitely causing warm water currents across the planet, and considering that there is nothing to disperse the wind on the planet aside from a few titans, it would be quite windy. Assuming the planet rotates, that is. Planet rotation causes wind, and well, there is a day and night cycle, so yeah, the planet rotates, duh. So we have a warmish ocean and cold winds all across this water world, as well as the sun's warmth and radiation, and all of this comes together to create a temperature dynamic right on the surface, creating surface-only fog. Or as the Alrestians call it, the Cloud Sea. Monolith Studios has done it again with Xenoblade Chronicles 2. They've created a wonderful world filled with rich details, along with an interesting story that really helps put the player in the good old JRPG mood. And disclaimer, I have not completely beaten this game, as it's in JRPG, so it's I'm, it's gonna take me forever. So if you've played further than I and know something that I don't that would affect this theory, let me know down in the comments. And as always, 
Never stop using your noggin.